Welcome back, everybody. I'm Jay. He's Maddie. This is Yankee and the Brit. And today, the AFC North. And we're just going to start out with a team that Maddie and I, I don't want to say jumped on the bandwagon, but really enjoy following at this point. Yeah. The Cleveland Browns. Yeah, I mean, the, yeah, I love the Cleveland Browns. We really got, um, we started doing this channel in the playoffs of last season and it's it's doing really well. So we're really happy with that. Thank you, everybody who's watching the video. And if you're not, liked, subscribe to our YouTube channels, then please go subscribe on YouTube or like our Facebook pages. Thank you. That's the last plug from me until the end of the video. <laughs> um, uh, but uh, we started this and we uh, kind of hopped on the Browns. It's it's not like the hopped on the Browns bandwagon too much, but we had the Browns going a long way in the playoffs when other people didn't. Let's just let's just say that. And, uh, and we were right with that. And they did uh, great. And they're doing great so far. And it's uh, we were just talking about the Detroit Lions in our last video, and this is surely the map that the Detroit Lions kind of want to follow. Yeah, I'm going to say right out there, you know, I love Ke Kevin Stefanski. I thought he was a yeah. great hire. I think he's great. I am a big Baker Mayfield fan. Quit playing around. Pay that dude or he's going to cost you a lot more, and you're going to be in a Dak Prescott situation. But you're going to ask my boy, Maddie, you don't want to be in because <laughs> it's hell on your team and, and your fans and – whatever, you know, you're going to keep them, just pay them. But I wrote down what I thought the record would be. And I shocked myself right before Maddie and I started and I had to make sure I didn't go crazy, but I really yeah, genuinely thought he lost his mind. That's yeah. Cool. I literally thought I screwed something up, went back and looked. And this is where you're talking about your 14 and three Cleveland Browns. Yeah, I mean, I've got them going. I've got them going thirteen and four. So we're both just as like both just as crazy as each other. Um, okay, you're as mad as I am. Okay. Yeah, yeah no, no, no. I, yes. I'm looking at it, and it could easily be fourteen and three. I wouldn't be surprised. At I think 15 I know and where two, we differ. That would be crazy. I think I know the one game we differ, and it's week one. I yeah. I, well, I feel like there's another game where we where we differ okay. as well, but we'll, we'll get to that. So I've got them losing week one at the Chiefs. And I got and them winning because the, the best thing time. That yeah, I got them winning because the best time to catch the best team in your conference is week one when nobody's uh, in the groove. <laughs> That's true, but I also think it's the worst time to catch the Chiefs where they're just it could talent. Be. Like, it could like be, but I think you can catch a team in week one because they're not ready to play or – Whatever. So that's why. And maybe I'm just hopeful because, like I said, big Kevin Stefanski and Baker Mayfield fan. But I knew that's where we at least one we differed in the wins and loss. Yeah, I mean, I, I think the Cleveland Browns have the most complete roster in the NFL. Like when you go for it position by position, they've got the most highly graded position groups, I would say, in the NFL. Like that's that's. That's how I would look at it. Their offensive line is uh, probably top five, if not the best uh, offensive line in the NFL. Their defensive line, uh, Judavian Clowney in it as well, is going to be exciting to watch. Um, obviously, their quarterback, I've top 10, top 10 quarterback, definitely. Like, obviously, Jay thinks he's top 10 quarterback, but for most people, it's like top 15, top 10 quarterback, you know? Um, and then you've got that wide receiver group as well. And obviously that running back tandem out the back. Now they might not have the most talented players in every position, but their position group position by position is insane. Well, and when you go top 10 quarterback, I always joke, go right, right. Have everybody write down your top 10 quarterback. You'll have 13 of them. Yeah, you know exactly. I mean, it's, it, it's such a, like, but I just think Baker's a good enough quarterback where you ain't going to try to start over. You pay that dude. They got weapons across the board. Their defense is going to get better. They got a two-headed monster in the backfield. The receiving core is insane. The offensive line is good. You got good coaching. I mean, you know what I mean? I just, I could go on, and I think they're going to be a tough yeah. team. I have them splitting with the Ravens. I have them splitting with um, the Steelers. And I have them losing to the Patriots. I have them losing to the Patriots. I have them losing to the Patriots. I have them uh, losing to the Ravens. I have that. Yes, I have them losing to the Patriots, splitting with the Ravens, losing to the Packers, losing to the Chiefs, but fully beating the Steelers uh, all the way okay. through. Okay. Um, I would actually, I can't argue that if they, if that whole Packer game, 
Definitely. That pack again. That Every way. single one of those games could go either way. And, like it, and it, I could see them sweeping the Steelers too. So yeah, I, I can see that. I'd be surprised if they didn't sweep the Steelers. That's a, that's a preview. That's a preview for later in this video. Uh, but I'd be surprised if they uh, didn't sweep the Steelers. I think the only, there's only two questions about the pack, uh, the Browns for me this season. It's, can their secondary hold up? Because that's probably the weakest part of their team. And then I looked through their depth chart and said, there isn't one person out of their starting secondary that I wouldn't take at Dallas. So for that to be the weakest part of their team is pretty insane. Um, and also, can they stay level-headed in the hype? I think the one problem with Baker Mayfield is he sometimes gets too jacked up on the hype and gets too into it. And I mean, there was a lot of commercials when he first got big in the NFL, like, and Hey, get your money. I don't think it took too much away from his game, but can they stay level headed throughout the hype? But I think having Kevin Stefanski there is going to keep them level headed throughout the hype. Yeah. And plus Kevin Stefanski, longtime Vikings coach. So He's a run-first guy. He is not going to put it on, uh, like, Baker's shoulders and be like, carry us. He's going to be like, you need to make plays when it's your turn to make plays, right? So I think that helps a, a guy like Baker Mayfield. I mean, I'm not saying he's Aaron Rodgers or Patrick Mahomes. You ain't going to, like, just throw the team on his back and ride them. But they have that double-headed running game, and I don't know, man. That offensive line is nasty. I'm excited to watch yeah. the Browns. When you have a double-headed running game and then Odell Beckham and Jarvis Landry in wide receiver, then you're going to be good. <laughs> like You're going to have a great offense. There's no team that you can't go up against with the offense that they have. And with Baker Mayfield, like, now I, I like Baker Mayfield and I want him to show me more this season for me to definitely put him in my top 10. But as you say, he's easily my top 10 quarterbacks of the 15 quarterbacks that I think are top 10 quarterbacks. You right. Know? Yeah. Like, that's what always happens. Yeah. I've yeah. There's no, de there's, there's no like debate. There's no or, debate. Yeah. I'd say he's in like the top, like 13, 12, 12, 13. Like that's why I've got him out, but I just need him to, I just need him to show me more. And I think he has shown enough already to get his payday and he's shown enough to say the Browns are not the Browns. No, not the not the Browns are the Browns, Browns in a bad the bad way. <laughs> I think, uh, like you said, the Lions better start walking around and saying the Browns are the Browns in a new way. Like that's the model we better follow because they were trash for a gazillion years, and now they found the right model, the players, the coach. I think, I think, like I don't think they're going to the Super Bowl, but I definitely like with an injury here or there to the wrong team, they could be in the Super Bowl. I, I don't think it's out of the realms of possibility to see them beating the Bills and the Chiefs in the air. Well, you knew who I was talking about, but I never want to throw the injury bug on somebody. But if that yeah. bad man in their division got hurt, yeah, then I could see it. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, of course. But it's you can see them even with Josh Allen and Patrick Mahomes, the two biggest contracts in NFL history. Uh, <laughs> you can see them beating both of those teams. It's not out of the realms of possibility that they're in the Super Bowl this year. And I, there wasn't out of the realms of possibility that they were in the Super Bowl last year. They, they seem to be a difficult matchup for the Chiefs, and that's going to be great to see week one. Yes, sir. So where you want to head to next? Uh, so I'm heading to Baltimore. Uh, next is where I'm going. Is where I'm going straight to because they, for me are the contenders for the division and I've got them going 13 and four. Do you look at my notes? I've got them exactly the same as the Cleveland Browns and I'm excited to see which way that swings. I think I think the Patriots game for the Browns is where it swings for them and the Miami game for the Ravens is where it swings for them. So the two uh, AFC North contenders. So I think the big question mark as I'm looking at it is Miami where that's my I've got an L on Miami uh, for the Ravens and that's largely due to the fact of it's at Miami and Florida is a horrible place to play football okay yeah I can see that um, 
I don't have a problem with that pick or that loss. Where I see it coming is I have them losing to the Chiefs. I have them. This all depends on Carson Wentz, but I have them losing to the Colts. Yeah. Um, then I have them losing once to the Browns, and I have them losing to the Packers. Yeah. Yeah, I can, I can see all of those things happening. Maybe the Colts is not I, – I can't see them losing. I think the Colts are going to be really freaking good this year, but I'm on that bandwagon, and if people don't think they're going to be as good as I do, I get it. Yeah, I think the Colts are going to be better next year. I think that's the year – for the Colts, I think Wentz being one year removed from the Eagles is where that's going to go. But that's for another that's for another time. Um, I think it's amazing that they've got an 18 game preseason win streak, and I think that kind of just shows the kind of franchise this is. So with the Browns, it's this is new success. This is that's a question mark for the Browns because is this new success just a show? Like neither of us do you think it is, but can they stay level-headed? The Ravens are always level-headed. They they go into win games. They don't they don't mess about. Like they they go into win every game. They win eighteen preseason games in a row. That's insane. And I've and always preseason. said Hollywood Brown is a number one receiver. They can say what they want, but now you got Sammy Watkins. You have more weapons. Yeah. Lamar's another year into that system. I good luck. Who yeah, I think the Hollywood Brown is a number one receiver. It's just you don't really need a number one receiver that much in when you've got... I just think if you were to put Hollywood Brown with Tom Brady, he's got a 1,000 yards. If you put him with yeah. Aaron Rodgers, he's got... A th- so, like, I'm not trying to... Like, I always hear, we need a 1,000-yard receiver. You have one. It's just not your style of football. That's not what Lamar does. And that's not yeah. what you want Lamar to do. Like, it's, you imagine want Lamar giving to be Josh Lamar. Allen Hollywood Brown. Imagine giving Josh Allen Hollywood Brown like right. yes. yeah, yes. yeah. You, you know what I mean. Like, um, but I, I they're defense. just a winning football team. They're just a football team who know who they are and they go in and win. The one issue I've got is I think they're gonna lose to the Chiefs week two. Can they recover from the fact that they keep on losing to the Chiefs? Is the one question mark that I is the one question mark that I have because that's got to be getting to you. They do then play the Lions and the Broncos straight after that just to get back into the groove of winning again. So I don't think it's going to be too big an issue. I think the issues start in the playoffs for the Ravens, and that's a video for later down the line. This is just a random thought that just came to me, not pre-thought out, but when you said, can they get over losing to the Chiefs? I think Lamar will have them over it because he seems like the type of guy who's always been told, you can't do this. You can't do that. You can, you'll, you'll never be this. You'll never be that. And Lamar's just like, whatever, watch me. So I, he just seems like that type of dude who's overcame and as your leader. But yeah, if I don't think the Harbaugh lets him get there either. But yeah, I agree with you. If, if you get in your own head, it's the worst thing that can happen in professional sports. That's the only thing. If the wheels fall off because they get the brakes beat off them by the Chiefs, that's the only way they not they. That's the only way they don't make the playoffs this season. Let's let's put it like that. That's that's the only way they don't make the playoffs. Or obviously injuries, but we can't like we can't predict those. So you know, um, the the season starts for the Ravens as it always does in the playoffs. That's where their season starts every year. And uh, that, that's all that you can really say about them, to be honest. Right. And they're the only team in the NFL with a six-headed running game. I don't understand how they stockpile <laughs> running backs, but whatever. <laughs> Moving on to a team who got a running back in the draft this year who might be pretty good, the Pittsburgh Steelers with Najee Harris. I just said I still haven't got over taking a running back in the first round when you have so many issues. But anyway. It's just because it's Steelers football, but I agree. They're the only ones yeah. who could have got away with it. Go watch our Steelers go watch football. our videos on those. <laughs> um, I've got the Pittsburgh Steelers going six and eleven. Oh, I lost. Go ahead, because I lost my sheet here for a second. Cool. Uh, so I've got the Pittsburgh Steelers going six and eleven, and that may sound shocking to some people. Oh, six and eleven, but. Listen to the teams I've got them losing to, and then you'll you'll understand. So I've got them losing to the Bills, the Seahawks, the Ravens, the Browns, the Chiefs, 
the Vikings, the Ravens again, the Chargers, and then the Bengals, just because of where they play the Bengals. Um, I have them beating the Chargers, but I have them losing to the Titans. Yeah. I, I, I They were so bad last year. Like, they nearly lost to the Dallas Cowboys when Dak Prescott was being injured and Andy Dalton had concussions. So Blaine Gabbert, who we've seen play in the preseason and how bad they are, Blaine Gabbert and Ben DiNucci, we've seen it and they nearly lost to the Cowboys. Let's just put that into perspective. They they had to play the NFC East. They were the worst 11-0 team anybody's ever seen. They had to play the NFC East to get to 11-0 and and they still lost to Washington and I'm pretty sure they lost to the Giants. I'm not, don't quote me on that, but I'm pretty sure they lost to the Giants and what? Like, and everybody's saying like, oh, the Steelers are the Steelers. They'll bounce back. They'll bounce back. What have they done in the off season to show anybody that they'll bounce back? I got them 10 and seven. So it's not as murderous as you, but, um, what, I think what it they go as Big Ben goes. I think they go as Big Ben goes, and I think that's just how it is. With the Steelers, I think they'll have a better running game because Najee's better than Connor was. And I don't know about that offensive line, man. That's what makes me nervous with I, it. Doesn't matter. It doesn't matter how good your running back is if your offensive line is terrible. Right. That's what it makes me matter. nervous is the offensive line. So Najee line. Harris, like – that's my that's I don't have a problem with stacked teams taking a running back. Like if the Tampa Bay Buccaneers went, I want another running back and so Najee Harris or Travis Sitiana or whatever, I'd be like, fine, what well, whatever, go for it. But when you don't have an offensive line, what's the point in taking a running back? The only thing that has changed for the Pittsburgh Steelers is their veteran O linemen are gone. Big Ben is another year older and they haven't signed anybody to fix that. <laughs> well, though, I just think I may be back there and it's training camp, but Ben does look healthier and yeah. comes back, plays better. You go as Ben goes. I think they can win 10 games out of this, but if they went your route, I wouldn't be completely shocked either. Yeah. I, I just don't think Ben Roethlisberger is, stomach was the problem last season. I thought it was his arm. Like they didn't throw it further than 10 yards. They didn't, can they, right. The questions that you have for the Pittsburgh Steelers are, has Big Ben got anything left? Can they run the ball? And can they throw the ball more than 10 yards? And if they answer those questions with a yes, then they're a great team. They're going to do really, really well because it's the Steelers and they know how to defend in football games. They know how to win close games all of the time. Well, I just don't feel like they've done anything in the preseason and off season to actually show me that they've done that. Well, Ben is the only quarterback we've ever watched come off Tommy John surgery. Pitchers take almost two years to come back from it, right? Maybe that was something to do with it. But we're going to find out. We're going to find out because, like, if they're going to go as Ben and that offensive line go. Yeah, and I just don't. Um, I I don't know. They just looked so bad at the end of last season and I haven't seen anything to kind of change that because they kind of went into last season in kind of cap hell as well. So they haven't been able to, they haven't been able to really do anything to, uh, to change that. It's also really harsh because the Steelers would be favorites to win the NFC East. And we're going to come on to that in when we talk about the Bengals as well, but putting them six and 11, they'd be the favorites well, maybe not the favorites. The Cowboys and the Washington football team are good teams too, but they'd they'd have a much better better record if they were getting to play the Eagles and the Giants twice a year. And like you know what I mean. Or if they were in other any other division apart from this one where all the teams you wouldn't be surprised if all the teams could go and get winning records either. Well, moving on to the teams who wonder if they'll even have a winning record at all would be the Cincinnati Bengals. And I'm just gonna tell you straight out, I got them. I got them going two and fifteen. Two and fifteen. Wow, I've got them going six and eleven. I'm, I got them beating the Jags. I got them beating the Jets, and I have Joe Burrow injured by eight, week eight. Yeah, I, I can totally understand that. I've written at the bottom of my paper, offensive line in massive capital letters, because that's what we were talking about before the draft. Do you do you remember like the the video before the draft where we just we said. Our AFC North teams 
Need Bengals and then just screamed offensive line and then that was the end. And we of both screamed Penny Sewell eighteen thousand times. Yeah, and they, neither of them need, and they didn't do anything to fix their offensive line really. Like, which that's their biggest issue. What I've got them doing is I've got them beating the Jags, the Jets, uh, the Raiders, Steelers, and Broncos. I'm not entirely happy with the Broncos, but that okay because it's at Denver. But anyway, um. And what I've got their buy comes at the perfect time. So they have a buy week 10. So Joe Burrow is going to take some time to get his feet under it, uh, some time to get his feet under him. But that's the nice week part of their schedule where they get to play the Jags, the Jets, and the Lions. So like they there's three wins there, even if Joe Burrow's still getting used to throwing with that ankle and stuff like that. And then they take that bye week. Joe Burry's played some football. He's feeling better. And then watch out for that offense because it is a high-flying machine. They're going to get that poor kid hurt again. I hope it's not a seizing an engine injury. But at some point, he's going to be playing the whole season, season injured again. And that's where I think the problem comes in. Because like we both said, they didn't do anything to fix that offensive line. It's not like their defense yeah. lit the world on fire. Their best cornerbacks left. Like, well, okay, so they'll get Trey Wayne back. But, like... I just, I, I don't know, man. I, I like saying, Jamar Chase. This is not a shot at Jamar Chase. The guy is a monster. But, like, a receiver ain't changing the world down there. And I don't know why the hell you didn't protect Joe Burrow's blind side. I think when you look at the, when you look at the other schedules in this division as well, these guys have got off the nicest. Like, the Bengals they, oh, have got yeah. the easiest yeah. schedule in their division by quite a long way. Um, when, when you look if at they, it like that. If they beat the Lions, I wouldn't be shocked. So that would give them three instead of two wins for me. And I actually wouldn't be shocked if they beat the Raiders too, because I think everything that's coming out about the Raiders being investigated by the IRS and the everybody's jumping ship and uh, that shit goes they down. Have no the players have to answer <laughs> questions. So, okay, at best, I see him with four wins, but you see him with six. That's not too crazy. Yeah, I, I, I think it's the the Steelers game where it's where I see them really like, I feel like they'll ramp themselves up for the Steelers. I think that's just more. That would be awesome. What it'll be like this season. That's what they did this season. They beat the Steelers this season. They turn up, but that huge hit on Juju Smith Schuster, you know, like it's that, like it's that kind of, it's that kind of thing. I think they just ramp themselves up for the Steelers and go for it and beat the Steelers uh, doing that. I do worry for Joe Burrow's, Safety. That's my own. Yeah, issue. that's my issue. I'm so scared. That's my for that issue. Kid. And that's a, that's my that's my issue. But you're feeling it's a it's a weird feeling with this, right? Because they look like they're kind of getting their franchise together. Like after a long time of not being together, they feel like they're getting their franchise kind of together. So you, I feel like they've got an offensive lineman somewhere like they know Well, they had that guy that was injured all last year that got drafted the year before and i forget his name so if they're sold on him that's one spot that sewed up yeah. okay i get that but i don't know what their cap situation was but i guess it i'm guessing it had to be pretty good because they're the Bengals and they don't spend money <laughs> they should have thrown money at every offensive lineman that was out there they should have bat they should yeah. have overpaid offensive linemen for the next three years to keep joe burrow standing yeah, I mean, Joe Thune would have been a good pickup for them. Uh, Orlando Brown, like, good pickup for them. Not trading in division, obviously, Orlando Brown. Right, but know. I'm just saying, you got to do something, man. You got to yeah, get anybody. somebody. And there were so many. There were so many offensive linemen. And that is, a, that is a real issue. And I've just got offensive line written in big letters down here. So I think 6-11 and 11 is – I'm really rooting for the Bengals, I think, because I like – I like the way they play. Like I like the way they look on offense. I really like Joe Burrow as a player. So I want them to do well. For me, I just thinking about what you're saying is I like the players on their team. I can't stand the coaching staff or the ownership. So it's this weird, like, I don't know. You know what I mean? Yeah. It, it's, yeah, that's true. That's why I'm laughing because you're like, I like the team. I like the play. I'm thinking, yep. And this ownership and this coaching staff might ruin all these young kids. Yeah. And I mean, I've just, I've just thought that I've got the Bengals and the Steelers going for the same, like having the same record 
across the thing, uh, uh, across the season, and how badly I was talking about the Steelers and how positively I'm talking about the Bengals to get them to 6-11 and 11, and how negatively I'm talking about the Steelers just shows how different franchises they are. And it's not something that Cincinnati should be particularly proud of to be happy to get to 6-11. and 11. And I think that's the differences between their two franchises are the reason that the Steelers will probably have a better record than the Bengals. But as I look at it now, I can see them both going 6-11, and 11, I think. Well, that's very interesting for me, Maddie. I like that you bring a different perspective because, like I said, you made me think about some things and uh, you actually changed my mind on starting Justin Fields and it's not even a Justin Fields thing. It's a Matt Nagy <laughs> thing. Like, really, though, you completely <laughs> changed my mind because I said it before. I do not wish bad on Justin Fields. I do not wish anything. I think he's got really hitchy mechanics and I think it's going to be a problem for him. But I think that Matt Nagy was the worst thing that could happen to that kid. So maybe not starting right away would actually be beneficial for him. Yeah, Costa, I think it's good to just – like I think it's really good to look at where different, fri- where different franchises see success. So we've said the Ravens' season doesn't start until the playoffs, but if the Browns go in winning their division – they're going to be insanely happy with that. Like, you, you see what I mean? Like, this is a division yeah. where you have the Steelers and the Ravens as, like, the teams, and then you have two teams that haven't had great success. And it's a really interesting division, the AFC North. Uh, it's a really black and blue division, and I definitely wouldn't want to be a player in this division. Like, I definitely wouldn't want to be uh, a team in this division. I wouldn't want to be facing this division at any point. And... Uh, yeah, it'll be a fun division to watch, and I think it's one of those divisions that I'll be tuning into. Yeah, it's definitely going to be exciting. They're going to beat the hell out of each other all year long. Um, I, I hope everybody stays healthy. I mean that in the best football way, but they are going to smack each other in the mouth in that division because yeah. I even if you even if you win the next day, you're going to feel like you lost if you play the Ravens. The Steelers' defense is a hitting defense. The Browns are coming to hit you. So we'll see what goes on with the Bengals. Either way, whatever offense there, even if you win, you're getting hit in the mouth that game. So it should be exciting. All right, guys. Now, Maddie pitched you in the beginning. Like, subscribe, go to YouTube, (laughs) subscribe. All right, guys. Thanks for watching. We'll keep coming back with more breakdowns of the other divisions. I think we got six left, but don't quote me because math was never my strong suit. One world, one love. Deuces. Cheerio.